So wait, all was uh all's at peace in the world. The wolves are the wolves are no, are no longer at the doorstep. Wait, who are the wolves? <laughs> uh, I'm afraid uh, due to contractual obligations and a, a couple non disclosures, I cannot say anything about that. Okay. That's more of a it's more of a more of a feeling than a than a person. Fair enough. I got some new uh new britches the other day. What's up? I got some new britches the other day. Oh, are you what are you sponsored now? What is this? This is an ad read for uh, battle briefs use ten ten dollar <laughs> discount code in the No, uh the well I guess it was longer than the other day. Remember when we stopped by five eleven? Yeah. So they finally have like the the pants like I like. Yeah. Like if they're stretchy. I don't know what you call this shit. They're super comfortable. Oh, you're talking about britches, not underwear. You're talking about pants. pants. Britches. I always thought britches was underwear. No. I'm sorry I wasn't born in the 1700s. I guess, uh, I guess it could be whatever you wanted to be. Your britches. You know what? I'm looking this up. Britches. It's pants, man. <laughs> That's what's come up over there on the far right is definitely not britches. Oh, God. Britches is not even the, 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 the correct word. So britches is like a... Uh, like a form from the British breeches, which are like trousers. Interesting. And they have like the leggings and they have like the bulky the little pantaloons yeah. over it. That's what I always wondered where breeches come from. Breeches. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking white people. <laughs> Other than Just taking European culture and ruining yeah. it. Breeches. <laughs> um. <laughs> Nice. So five eleven pants are, are goaded. I don't remember what they're called. I need to get you a pair of Lululemon. Uh, how about no? Just like, but like they're just the most comfortable pants you'll ever wear. And you're like, holy shit! These are uh, pretty fantastic. Time will tell how well they hold up. Because the Magellans have been doing really well for about three years now. Yeah, it's quite a bit of abuse. What not is, as comfy as my Kuyus. So what's going on? What's going on in your world? Everything. Does it not just see, does it, does it just not seem quieter in the world to you today? Not really. I've been listening to podcasts all day while I was working. Oh. Just racket. Yeah. It's very quiet in here. It is very quiet in here. <laughs> maybe all, all the voices in my head are quiet. Yeah. Today. Maybe uh maybe the voices in your head are quiet today. I, I think that's what it is on a little vacay. Mm, that's good. Well, uh, I guess we're going to do a Q and A today. Q and A. There's. So, I've been purposely not answering questions <laughs> for, this, for this moment. I don't. I, I, we're probably gonna have too many to fit into one episode. So I guess. We'll yeah. See. No. There's. I was like, this quickly got out of hand. Uh, but we'll get to as many as we can. Um, I'm just not looking forward to editing this because I'm gonna have to like ding each comment. Ding. Yeah. So, uh, you know, yeah, we're basically from, we had posted the last two Q and A's. We told you guys to start commenting and that we're going to try and like wrap them up into videos, make it easier, um, for everybody. So I will be reading through your comments. I will be, uh, liking them and then popping them up in the video and the Wade will give you his thoughts. First question. Uh, what SIG BDX scope do you recommend for a six arc? Ooh, the uh, three to eighteen easy six BDX. Uh, I actually have one on my eighteen inch. Well, we did a video on it. At yeah, I think ha- it happened in between now and when this comes <laughs> somewhere. Out. The easy six BDX uh, three to eighteen, fantastic. Uh, which we've done. I think we've done reels on it, like that particular scope and everything else. Uh, it's I'm I have one on my eighteen inch. I love it. Like for a predator hunting slash long range hunting slash deer hunting setup, freaking fantastic. I mean, you gotta understand for the price point of the optic, you're not getting like I think it was around thousand dollars somewhere around there or something like that. You're not getting like a thousand dollar glass total. It's a because it has a Bluetooth and all that stuff, and uh, those have a little bit darker of a. Uh, lens coating however the glass is clear it is a fantastic option for the price point especially given like what all the bdx system can do and then the new easy six bdx like reticle and everything is spot on like i, I freaking love those things i can't wait to see where they go with it. uh so next question and this is gonna be an interesting one what is your recommendation for a pin and weld suppressor mount 
slash muzzle device for a 14 and a half inch six arc. Ooh. Ooh. Pin and weld. Let's see. It, it's going to highly depend on the can that you're going with. Um, yes. I mean, without knowing how long they are, offhand, I couldn't say. I mean, 14 and a half. I, I just now started testing out the new Zeno. Yeah. That they're finally, uh, I think that one would probably be long enough. If, if it is, I would check out that system. You know, I, th- I'm glad this got brought up cause I was thinking about it the other day. Like there's other companies that do, uh, muzzle devices specifically for this that work with like the plant, the plan B and stuff like that. Uh, I can't remember the name of the company. Rendering, rendering, Reardon. Reardon. I think they do some. That Blackout Defense does some. Because the sad part about, like, I was looking at the, the I think it's Springfield 14 and a half inch option we have at the store. It has some weird thing pinned well to I'm just like, yeah. you know, what if you want to run suppressor? And like, it seems like they would maybe pair with Dead Air or someone like that, like, get something figured out. Uh, there, I mean, there's a couple, a couple other companies out there that specifically do muzzle devices that will work with current stuff, and just I can't recall them, all of them off the top of my head. Like, I'm gonna post a link. Uh, my response is gonna be a link to this uh, Bear Arms who did a. They have a spreadsheet, but there's a specifically for 13.7 inch that reaches 16. Oh, so it'd be fun with all the information. But yeah, we don't really have a specific uh, recommendation. Yeah, but because I mean, you go chemo, right? Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. But bleh. well, like, that's that's <laughs> the hardest thing is like what like what are you doing with your rifle? Well, what's the what's the suppressor to? Or like what's the, yeah? That's the hardest part. Uh, yeah, because I mean that's gonna determine a lot. You know whether it's a lightweight setup or not. I can't wait till we have enough negative comments. <laughs> one of those <laughs> i know right <laughs> actually we probably have enough if you go all the way back and forward probably have just enough for a 12 minute talk um i don't know if you want to answer this one so i'll read it and you can say yeah your nay says uh when loading your ammo that you sell are you using book overall length like i'm trying to create a load that both my six creeds can shoot instead of loading the lands on each rifle and having two different loads yes i will answer that uh here's the easiest part of it load to mag length it depends on the projectile load to mag length book length whatever don't worry about trying to get on lands and all that other crap this most of these projectiles nowadays are very jump tolerant like in is it would be tolerant or intolerant like it doesn't matter tolerant yeah the, it's gonna be fine because he said he's shooting six creed right yeah yeah uh i mean the if you wanted to be close to lands because if you're one of those people you could, you know, get all the stuff and measure, you know, but at the end of the day, just load the book length, especially if you're new to it. If you're new enough to ask this question, load a book length, make sure it fits in the mags you're running, go from there. Yeah. If you're loading good ammo, uh, paired up properly, it's going to shoot fine. Yeah. Probably, I mean. Jump tolerant? Caveat. Would it be caveat? Yeah. Certain burger burger projectiles don't like a lot of jump and and if you're loading 108 graders did he say what he's loading no if you're loading 108 graders i wouldn't even worry about it like 105s 108 stuff like that don't worry about it like trying to get up in the lands and all that crap which you shouldn't anyways but less uh certain burger projectiles are less tolerant of jump yeah uh if he's loading like <coughs> varmint projectiles which you know could be the case Load the book, book, uh, COL. Mm-hmm. Just, just roll with that. Like, don't worry. Don't spend your time worrying about that bullshit. It's not really worth the time. Yeah, well, that makes sense. Um, good no BS stuff. Do you notice that the stainless steel pin tumbling peens the case mouse on your prepped brass? I have it. Never have. And I, I mean, I'll, uh, Hmm. Not that I recall. I think I think if you're if you're getting that, 
probably need to add a little bit more water. <laughs> I don't, you know, uh, just whatever. Generally speaking, if you like buy like certain companies stuff, they're going to have instructions. They're going to give you like how much water to put in, how much stainless steel media, you know, so on and so forth. Just go off what they say. Uh, I've, I've never witnessed it myself at any of my brass. Any ideas on when Ally will get in some six millimeter arc variant loads? I don't know if that's Ally Outdoors, Ally Munitions. Um, either way, the answer is the same. Yeah, kind of. Munitions were, they're still saying like, you know, late summer time frame on brass. I assure you, as soon as it's in, we're going to be rock and rolling. As far as factory ammo, we've ordered a bunch through outdoors and we're still waiting on it. So I would assume just as, I don't know what Horty's waiting on. Like, yeah. I don't, like, it's getting pretty, pretty slim pickings out there. So no idea. <laughs> I, I just run underneath the assumption late summer, early fall on both. Probably it's just as a guess. <clears throat> So this guy says, uh, new to the gas gun world, have a six millimeter arc, been reloading for a while, and was wondering what gas gun to look for. With gas guns, what to look for on brass signs, wanting to load for coyotes and fox, since you were talking about reloading. I was wondering what you looked for. And Same thing. Uh, I'm watching the primer first. Look, Watch your book. You know, watch your book, and what they call is like max pressure. It's based off of like their pressure testing equipment. Mm -hmm. But... You can push a little bit harder, but just watch the brass for uh, ejector swipes first. I mean, AR-15s are pretty known for just chewing up brass, but you can still like as you as you're watching your book like on charge weights stuff like that. You're still watching your brass for like signs of pressure, you know, as in the uh, ejector ejector swipe. <laughs> Okay. Sometimes uh, that could be its own little thing. Sometimes on AR-15 platforms, excessive like chew marks and stuff like that. Like that's your. It's gonna like run. Would it be consequential? Like what? Sync? Like I don't know how you say that. Like the brass is gonna because it's more violent. Typically, it's gonna chew up the brass a little bit more. Like pieces are gonna get you know like beat around quite a bit more. <laughs> It's going to like run at the same time as that like pressure sign from your ejector. Does that make sense? Yeah. How would you say sequential? Like what's like at the same time? Um, it'd be like, uh, oh gosh. Uh, coinciding. Yes. Hey, <laughs> start doing this after a day of like it being in utter silence and not talking to people. I'm like <laughs> me brain. No work. Good. Words. What does that mean? What is the office where he's like, why do many word when few word do same? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, some people like like watch the ejection patterns and all that bullshit, but just watch your brass. If you're first starting out, like to the point where you have to ask these questions, just watch the book. What the book says, go off those charge weights. And like, no, if you're like four grains over what their max is, and you start seeing ejector swipes, probably, <laughs> probably there. Uh, you know, maybe that's a whole other topic for another day. Loan for AR 15s, because, yeah, we'll get into that another day. <laughs> um, this person, I'm thinking about picking up a CMMG Resolute Mark IV six millimeter. Okay, look at picking up a CMG uh, six arc. Uh, do you have any opinions on six CMMG in general? I know like all the, I don't have one of those yet. Uh, you know, it takes time to buy all this crap up because a few times I bought them for the store. Like typically what I want to do is I like buy one, check it out in person, put it out. Well, like as soon as it sells buy two and generally, typically speaking, I'll buy the second one. Uh, I just hadn't got another one in cause we've been so busy with everything else. Yeah. Uh, but the you first one sold immediately. I've watched a bunch of reviews on like some, a few channels that I do trust on stuff like that. Good reviews. Uh, but I haven't bought one yet. You know, I just, 
looked up and everybody was making one. Yeah. So now it's like, oh, I got to buy this one. Got to buy that one. And it just shouldn't come back up yet. <laughs> the reviews have been strong. Like it sounded been good. Oh, and this is in regards to your six arc video. Uh, why would you not go below uh, 60 grain projectiles? Any reason or just a preference? RPMs. Uh, the, was that all they said? Yeah. RPMs, uh, you know, 58 grain. That's why I kind of just said 60. Yeah. 58 grain is going to, you're going to, you know, based off of what's known about bullet RPM stuff like that, but you know, what the threshold is for getting splash on an animal. Yeah. 65, just be safe and stick it, stick with 65, unless you're getting into like the 14 and a half, maybe even 16, but even still my 16, I'm going to run 65. You know, yeah. Uh, but it's also kind of, depends on what bullet you're running like there's several different variables to this like <clears throat> typically speaking the uh nozzler ballistic tip varmint has a little bit of base to it so even if you do push it like up upper higher rpms to where technically like a traditional varmint bullet might explode because it does have that base to it it may be okay for the like over 300k rpm yeah. threshold but just like we were talking with the sergeant of arms guy, uh, I had several people reach out to me and it was like, Lily was like half and half, half of them said, no, you're right on the RPM threshold. And half of them said, well, I'm doing this with mine, which the problem with all of that is, is like, you don't know, actually know what their velocity is and everything else. Yeah. And so like not everybody runs chronographs and there's guessing at their velocity based off of a book and, or, I, or they're just like, right on the other side like they're like right under the, the edge yeah and they're like yeah for whatever reason they're or like again bear like i don't even remember what, we, what all we got into on that podcast like barrel twist is a may a huge factor and when you calculate rpms it's based off of like known barrel twist how many of you, these people actually measure their barrel twist because what by the math could potentially be like right on the threshold yeah in reality, they may have like a slightly slower barrel twist, which keeps them actually under the threshold. Yeah. So the only way to do this, and I, like the last time I did like extensive RPM testing was years ago at this point. And I've just, you know, if you want to be safe, always keep it underneath 300,000, which again, there's exceptions to everything, but that's going to kind of cover you in a grand scheme of things. What we need to do is go back, order a ton of gel, which this shit costs a lot of money. It takes a lot of time. Yeah. And and when is our time to do it? It's not, you're yeah. not going to want to do it in the middle of I summer. Was, I was wanting to do it this summer. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, stick them in the fridge, maybe even the freezer and, you know, get them just right there a little bit colder and do it super early in the mornings, get as many as you can. But, you know, time, uh, that was on the docket for the summer and that kind of, Wait, Thanks, how, how, lo how long of a range how long of a range do you need <laughs> we could do it at ally in the 100 but it's still uh, i was gonna say but if you could pick the right week just shut down the 100 yard for a week or whatever <laughs> and just do the i mean you could do it at, out here at night but it's just like there's so much shit when like because there's new bullets their their manufacturing's changed a little bit some jacket thickness has changed like it seems to me potentially going off what people are saying about like the newer ELD, ELDX is like potentially they changed that bullet design slightly. But since I originally tested everything, but like the amount of stuff I want to do, it's, it's literally like a week's worth of testing. And I obviously want to film it and you know, all that crap, but that's a long answer to the question. Yeah. But right now I'm still sticking with like, go with a 65 grain on the, and don't worry about any length of barrels, like 65 grain and heavier for now. <laughs> yes. Uh, the, the exception is if you're running 14 and a half, 12 and a half, it's fine. Go down a little bit lighter. So, uh, this question, didn't one of you buy a 12, five Nov Noveski six arc barrel. Any thoughts on it? Uh, it's sitting in a bin with all my <laughs> other projects. I'm not allowed to do anything anymore. <laughs> we'll eventually, I literally, I have the, I'm pretty sure I have all the parts for that gun, like all like upper like everything. I just haven't thought about it. We'll eventually get around to it. I'm gonna go ahead and throw. Do you know what gas gas system is on it? 
Oh, because I'm curious. You like a- I'm gonna go ahead and throw out like my thoughts right now. Like I wouldn't want one underneath fourteen and a half, and unless you're just dying to have a SBR, or you can potentially pin weld or whatever. Uh, I wouldn't have one underneath sixteen inch. Mid length. That's, that's gonna be a gassy bitch. <laughs> I would. As much as it pains me to say this, I would run a flow through on that bitch. That's the plan. This guy was going to get one of the uh, CGS cans. Definitely would not do a traditional. And and if you don't reload, I, I don't even think I'd run that one. Just because, like, the 108s, the 105s, all that shit, like, Horty makes is very, like, super gassy and everything. Like, I don't, mm-mm. <laughs> it's just <laughs> hard no unless... You're gonna load for it and probably run a flow through. Like if if I did those two or or maybe even like a piston driven system, uh, twelve and a half, it'd still be badass. Don't get me wrong, but it would just running factory ammo would be very unpleasant to shoot unless you're running like a flow through type suppressor. So this guy said uh, he just got a Unitaw Precision six millimeter arc, twenty uh, two inch barrel that fits on AR lowers. Um, he has a receiver set that he's gonna build out. He wants a, a semi auto six arc uh, upper to go along with it. Um, he plans on hunting deers, hogs, and might have the opportunity for Coyote and Bobcat, but it's like be able to shoot targets to 700 to 1,000 yards. He's asking if, would you go 18 inch for the gas gun or go shorter? How far is he wanting to hunt out to? He didn't say hunting. He, he just, he might. Target? Be, yeah. If he's it, just going to target shoot out that far, just run with a 16 inch. 16 yeah. or 18. It's fine. Uh, if you want to hunt out to those ranges, I'd probably run 18 or longer. Like yeah. if you want to, like you want to get that ring out as much velocity so you can carry that energy down range. Cause the 14, five, like if you look at the numbers, like uh, appropriate bullet expansion on like target bullets, yes, I hunt with target bullets, get over yourself. Uh, 14, five technically is like 600 and in top, you know, territory, yeah. which is fantastic for a 14 and a half inch rifle. But if you just like 16, 18 inch, like it's going to do it all. Like, like I said, that one video, uh, by now, those people have probably seen it. 18 inch is like, it's kind of do it all. Fantastic setup. Yeah. Um, this one Wade, my friend, I'm a big fan, but I think you overran your headlights by a little bit. <laughs> a high BC six arc bullet shot with a muzzle velocity of 2750. We'll have an 800 yard velocity of approximately 1400 feet per second and an energy level of 500 foot pounds. This is far below killing velocity energy, even for Texas white tails. At that range, you are punching pencil holes through our deer. Did you really mean to say that? Can you read my... my yeah. My... Yeah, your response. Uh, not with proper projectiles. Trust me, I've seen me do it. <laughs> uh, well, I think that's... Again, that's and that's why I wanted to read it, even though you commented on that, is just to uh, give some context surrounding... <sighs> like... Again, it, energy, whilst a factor of the equation, is an... And energy is not direct direct reflection of the bullet's ability to kill anything. Also, on paper, energy is not a direct or ref, direct reflection upon what actually happens on the animal. This has been my complaint forever. Like the way they come up with these energy, like I don't even keep, give a shit about energy. I give a shit about velocity. In what velocity does that bullet stop opening at? Yeah, as far as it pertains to hunting, uh, energy. Energy, the energy levels that they give you in your little BC calculators and everything else is literally just a math equation. The reality of the situation is there's no, there's no way like a bullet that just zips through an animal well, as opposed to a bullet that is expanding and like exploding and it's dumping all of its energy inside the animal. Those, we're talking about two totally different things. Like it, well, there's not a, there's not a statistic that we can use to describe the bullet's ability to transfer its energy onto the target. And that's. Really, when you come down to the performance of something, that's the that's what you want to know is how does this bullet transfer the energy in, into the target or the yeah. And the best, I mean, the best way you can you shouldn't even worry about the energy displacement because it's 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 just a mathematical number. We don't actually know what it's doing to the animal yeah. as he stated. What you should worry about is through testing and like going off of manufacturers what they say, and you should test yourself velocity what the velocity is well yeah cuz you I mean at the, that target the 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 energy is just a factor of the weight of the projectile and the velocity so you should just really know okay this this is the projectile class weight that I want to be in and then what's the velocity of that you don't even have to dip in an energy no 
it's they're used to, then that comes from like a, the old adage of like you need to have like 800 or yeah. 900 or 1000 foot pounds energy at whatever range to, like, to effectively kill a white tail size game target 500 foot pounds for a coyote and it's just like no yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's because again it's based off of an equation that it's not it's not realistic because like i said if you shoot someone with an fmj or a green tip or whatever that zips through an animal or if you run a target bullet or a varmint bullet like the the energy transfer onto the animal is going to be vastly different even if they are same weight traveling at the same velocity yeah like it's vastly different now i'm sure somebody much smarter than myself like they there should be a way to where they can like brown lids, for example, can uh, like start putting together a library of like each individual bullet, what it does, like how much expansion, how much the animal weighs, and like what the actual energy is going to be, which that would take lots and lots of testing and mathematical equations that are far too advanced for a hillbilly like myself. Yeah. <laughs> but as of right now, just go off the velocity of projectile based off of like what the manufacturer says if you haven't done the testing yourself to see if like this bullet expands at certain velocities you need to just go like most manufacturers are going to give you a recommended velocity where this projectile will stop expanding and just pinhole through but that said let's talk about pinhole through it is highly popular amongst many hunters i was just going to say they the the old <laughs> mentality tries to have it both ways yeah they try to say that simultaneously, like, oh, it's just a target. It's just going to put a small hole through the animal. But then they have, like, this weird s- obsession with creating a giant exit wound from a blood trailing. And it's like, you can't have it both ways. You know, something getting through. You know, in an ideal world, even, I guess, with their mentality, that bullet would just, like, almost, like, fall, like, like just, like, fall out of the edge of the outside of the animal. But that's not really what happens. <laughs> that's not what happens. With- it's just wasted energy that's not being imparted. Onto the exactly tissue. uh it you know this needs me it's a whole other podcast like talking about bullet performance have we done one about bullet performance i know we did match we did we did match hunting, bullet suck for hunting but we need to like go back into this and like go hardcore maybe get someone else in here that like sh- either is staunchly against what i say or shares my opinions yeah because it, it's super interesting it's like of the hundreds and potentially thousands of animals i've harvested at this point over the life my lifetime the only bullet animals i've seen run away were the ones shot with like a traditional traditional style hunting bullet that goes all the way through perfect shots right through the heart and yeah as they run off like you're seeing all the blood just pump out like crazy but every other animal i've seen go straight down was with a uh more of a match style bullet that yeah. dumps every bit of its energy inside the animal. It gr- basically on, grenades inside. On the fucking organ. Yeah. <laughs> and everything around it. But I mean, yeah. Yeah. You can run your math and all that other bullshit. I've done it. <laughs> well, it. I've seen what it can do. Okay, get away from like if you were to design the perfect thing to kill somebody, wouldn't it be something that like goes in, travels like literally halfway into the body and then just explodes? Absolutely. Like that's that would seem like it'd be the most effective way to do it. Absolutely. And so yeah, yeah, just and now, now there's just the throw a. Now that th- uh, three hundred blackout and eight point six have become a thing, in the the popularity of solids and expanding solids and all that other bullshit, now enter in rotational energy into the equation. But also like that we need to do a whole podcast on that stuff yeah because the weirdest thing about it is okay let's talk rotational energy or whatever obviously the higher rpms you can spend something the more violent the explosion is going to be the more the energy is going to transfer into the Mm -hmm. target like i like how they're just like this is oh no one knew this is like varmint hunters are like yeah We've been knowing this for quite some time. It's figuring out like the perfect Mm -hmm. scenario, not to like with traditional varmint bullets, especially like thin jacketed. They're going to start overspending 300 grain projectiles. Yeah. I mean, it's 
it's a uh, it's been known for a long time like the the perfect scenario is you match the twist with the projectile and the velocity to where it does like make entry and then it explode because it dumps all the energy into them but when you start getting into like those kind of calibers if you were just running like a generic eight twist on something like that one it's probably not going to shoot where the shit two almost anything you put through it's going to pinhole unless it was like some yeah. Like one of Hordy's subsonic type projectiles that are meant to expand on, on like nothing. But what they found, it seems as if what they found, I need to brush up on this subject, uh, what they their findings with all that shit is. The amount of RPMs, like they're running one in one and one three twist barrels, but as like they told it to be this like great for long range subsonic type hunting bullet. But what they found is like spinning them that damn fast is they're like tracking off even further, like uh, spin mm-hmm. drift, yeah, yeah. all that bullshit. And all that shit's like super interesting to me because I'm just like, yeah, we've been knowing that, that like the faster you spin it, the better. But also like it's even more applicable. Yeah. Did I say that properly? Yep. Nailed it. To Some the, people say it different. The Some expanding. Say it applicable. Applicable. <laughs> The expanding solids. Yeah. Because you need, because what you're losing in velocity, you need that in rotational. I don't know. It's all that shit's super interesting. I I love where we're going though. Like with everything, like they're figuring out more and more cool shit about the solids. And what I I, I actually think is interesting because they're, they, with the eight, six stuff, they're shooting a lot of the bigger animals. Is it seems like to me, at least at a point, you're going to hit it where you're, you know, if you're relying on that RPM so much, like shooting lighter things, you're going to run into issues with getting it to actually like stop its energy. Like, yeah. I mean, like, I don't know where that, where that line is, but somewhere there's that line where, you know, if there's too much energy and then the, the weight of the target isn't enough to get it to like, you know, right. Yeah. Get your appropriate expansion. <clears throat> so that'll be, I don't know. I wish I like, I wish there was more like, they like had the details out there on all that. Cause I know everybody's experimenting with it, but either way, um, <laughs> that's that a long it's really that was long, a response, a to long response to that question <laughs> yeah ken fallen says have you experienced any bullet movement in your testing of six arc i'm using an 18 inch wilson combat with mid-length gas and my bullets will jump thirty thousands longer when uh firing a magazine he cannot mimic this one chambering around he've installed adjustable gas blocks it's helped to some degree maybe only down to ten thousands now but still having issues so what what i'm guessing the the uh, the the projectiles inside the magazine are pushing out thirty thou, or just when he one chambers, when uh when he'll chamber one separately without a magazine. It sounds like, and it'll happen. But then whenever he's, I guess when they're feeding from the magazine, uh, run tighter neck tension. Yeah, it's almost all ARs cramped or not. When you uh you know pull that old charge handle back and let her let her eat. A lot of them are going to jump. Uh, shit, I had my book out and I was looking at because I've been testing it. Like different neck tensions, how much jump and all that stuff. All of them are going to do it. I don't care if it's crimped or whatever. I don't crimp nothing. The cantilairs. <laughs> I don't crimp shit. Like I don't even worry about it. Uh, but you probably need to, if it's if it's jumping 30,000 inside your magazine, uh, before you do anything, Run a little bit tighter neck tension. Uh, yeah. Past that, uh, maybe look at like, what are you running? <laughs> Why does it have so much freaking recoil? Hey, you know, past that, like you can do things, the gas block, buffer, and all that shit to get her a little bit softer shooting to where it's not so crazy on the whatever. But neck tension is probably going to fix all that. And just know, like, um, when you, you know, slammer in there uh grip it rip it it's going to come out some it's just it's it's fine it's not the yeah. other world i mean thirty thousand sounds awful lot <laughs> yeah they uh the thing it's happening with both factory and hand loads more so with hand loads um interesting uh yeah i'd start messing with your gas system buffer and all heavy stuff. Buffer, so that's really interesting well heavy <laughs> This is why I want to, again, this is like part of the shit I want to do this summer is like really get in depth on testing. If you're running heavy buffer, in my mind, yeah, it's going to 
theoretically slow down the boat carrier. Correct? Because it's heavier. Yeah. Well, what happens when you run a super light buffer? Really, that a super it. light boat carrier. Like, can we get the same thing, but less, less, you know, a per pound inertia going? <laughs> well, there's there's almost a point though, because so they're using a, a mid length gas system here, and so uh, he said he's using a mid length. That's what that's what Wilson's using, and that's what I'm really I'm trying to figure that out. That sounds like head. an awful idea. There's an 18 because <laughs> right, like the thing is, you're slowing your 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 you could slow down your you know extraction process, but well, all that could theoretically like there's more gas behind, you know what I'm saying? You're also slowing the release right. of the bolt unlocking and that gas venting out from the chamber. So yeah, that could be, I'd swap the barrel out, <laughs> get a longer gas system. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know. I've never, I've never observed that much. So I'd have to like, again, I'd have to see it mess with it. Like make some brass. that's tighter yeah. night tension. And you know, I wouldn't want, Six arc, I wouldn't want that short of a gas system. Yeah. Wait, what what did he say? Intermediate? No, mid length. Mid length. Not yeah. That's what I I'm just trying to figure out what the what Wilson was thinking. That's pretty strange. Probably some boomer. Let's did he say what length barrel? Eighteen. No on it's an eighteen. Yeah. I don't want a rifle. I mean the proofs like the proofs are what rifle plus rifle one. Rifle plus one. I would want yeah. a, I'd want at least a rifle, if not a rifle plus one. I mean, I know it's annoying finding shit for the rifle plus one, but, uh, you know, you're, you're 30 grains of powder there. You know, obviously you can't run a rifle plus one on 16 inch. Can you? No, it's, it's just what length are the 16s. I don't remember. You can fear. It's close. Yeah. I you, think, you think it's 12 inches. A rifle length's 12, so it's 13. Um, I mean, would it be ridiculous? Yes. But again, everybody's kind of, let's be honest, I think everybody's kind of fucked off on the 6 arc anyway with the initial approach for the manufacturers because it is a gassier setup. Yes. Well, the powders that it excels in for velocity are shitty powders. Yeah. Until someone like... I'm sure Hornady is messing messing with their people and uh, other people are paying attention to get like a better, cleaner burning uh, powder for that like 30 grain, 30 grains weight region. Yeah. Like I said, you know, it'll perform good with certain powders, but like the ball powders really perform well as, as a taste of velocity. And those tend to be like dirty uh very temp sensitive powders and that's why like hornady's definitely running like a slower technically speaking a slower burning ball powder in the 108s currently well the last batch i got super dirty it really likes a longer gas system which i mean also everything i'm talking about is based off of running suppress so i mean you have the added back pressure as well yeah uh so uh, on the same uh, the same vein, Red Dog asks. I don't believe you mentioned it. What whose whose bolt are you running on that particular gun? We have no idea. It's the, which. It's the. Uh, it was this was the talk with the six arc. I told me to talk with the six arc. Uh, Eighteen green, inch greeny green one. Actually, I shot it today, so I know oh, okay. offhand that actually that one got Odin. Okay, so yeah, we've used a mix a lot of the JP bolts, and then you've had a couple of the Odins. Have we used anything else? JP's Odin's uh I feel like I've got a CMMG in one of mine. No, you, I know I do. You do. Yeah, yeah. So far, which I kind of have to check and see what's currently in the 145 because it has the highest round count. Everything else has I wonder that 145 was an Odin because that was before I got the JP's. You got the Odin at a local Oh, yeah, that's right. Texas yeah, I got it. Yeah, it's San yeah. Angelo. So it's it's definitely an Odin. Uh or maybe I pulled the the bolt head. Is that what you call it on AR yeah. fifteen? I might have pulled the bolt head off of that one and put it on one of my uh bootleg bolt adjustable bolt carriers. Oh, I think that's maybe. Like, yeah, but it's I remember <laughs> but the I'm, first one was. But I've got one. Odin's, I've got a CMMG, we've got the JP. Uh 
I don't remember what's in my uh one of my newer ones. I mean, like I said, the, that that particular one, whatever's in that fourteen five, has the highest round count so far. No I'm surprised issues. we haven't really heard anything about you know because he's like you know Grendel's. It's always there's so much talk about the actual bolts. I don't think there's enough ammo out there for people to wear yeah, them out yet. That's what I'm saying. I think that's what the <laughs> what the issue is. Richard Lane's uh, working on building a lightweight uh, one and done AR-15 and six arc, and he was thinking about 16 inch carbon barrel. What are your thoughts on 16, and what twist weight would you recommend? Whatever they have available, it's probably gonna be like a seven, seven and a half, somewhere around there. I love my carbon barrel ones. I mean, I've got all, are all your carbon arcs uh, proofs. I believe so. Yeah, I, was, I believe I, so. I was one in seven seven five. I believe the so. <laughs> it's either going to be a one seven one seven five. Uh, whatever they have, it's probably going to be the right twist. I mean, unless, I can't imagine anybody making anything. Well, as far as carbon barrels, you're going to be kind of locked in like one seven yeah. one seven five. It's going to be totally fine for anything you want to do. So, and it's Sixteen inch is great length. Like, I need to get some BSF. I need to get a six arc BSF in and test it. And so far. You know, and I only use mine for hunting. Like that BSF two two four Valkyrie is freaking a, a good shooting rifle. Yeah, it's been fantastic. Matt Scott asks, "Have you had a chance to play with a diligent wolf hunter yet?" Uh, he's curious about it versus the enticer for a six oh, arc setup. Yeah. I, <laughs> I love it. Enticer what? Because the wolf hunter they're so tiny. Well, on your, on your yes. setup, you were. I don't know. Now I have a wolf hunter on a six arc. Uh, 16 inch prototype. Uh, the enticers are such good cans. I don't, you know, like I, I, can, yeah. I recommend you getting whatever you want. Because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, like, uh, like he said, the and the difference between like the end, like if we're comparing apples to apples, enticer STI and the Wolf Hunter, I think the difference is like four decimals. Is what he said. Do you remember? Yeah. Um, and that's you know the internals and the end cap. Now you can, I just recommend getting any of them. The enticer S enticer STI or the wolf hunter. I mean, the wolf hunters are rad because they're six millimeter dedicated. As far as actually goes, I've noticed like any difference in actually like one being better than the other on any of my six arcs, uh, or two, two, four Valkyries and stuff like that. Cause I've tested the wolf hunter on a bunch of them <laughs> and, uh, all the enticer cans, they shoot, you know, freaking fantastic. Uh, the song dog sniper asks, uh, seating depth is on, on, in reference to the 22 Creedmoor video. How far off the land is a good seating depth to start with? He runs 80 green burger VLDs. It's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. VLDs are, eh, it's probably going to be one of those that likes to be close to the lands, but you know, it's coming up to you. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna have to deal with. Is this is hard hardest one to answer because the 20 degrees still has a lot of weird chamber specs out there. So basically, the best thing for you to do is have the horny OAL gauge. You know, find out where that bullet hits lands, see how it looks as far as how far it's coming out of your cartridge case, go from there, uh, or thereabouts, and test that projectile in your your own chamber, see where it hits lands, then. Compare that to, you know, cartridge overall length. It still fits in your magazine, all that kind of shit. Because, like, I, w I have no idea what all he's running. And, like I said, we've been trying to track down, like, all the different uh, chamber specs for the 20 degree. Yeah. That shit's still all over the place. As far as, like, uh, freeborn, all that kind of shit. He's just going to have to figure, find that out for himself. This guy says, whack, with a bunch of Ks. <laughs> You're whack. <laughs> uh, Matt Scott says, I would love to see the details in a six hour talk. This is talking about our intro to reloading. And then asks, what about using rumble? What about using rumble? I've, you know, what? I've had a few people say the same thing. Um, yeah, I'm going to put this up to you guys. I've thought about it. I didn't know if anybody would actually be interested in it. I can mirror everything to rumble. What is rumble? It's like a, uh, alternative vid video hosting platform. Um, it's, you know, a lot of the people who got kicked off YouTube and stuff. I got um, you. It's probably the biggest, I would assume one of the biggest next to YouTube. Now. Yeah, let's start posting there. Yeah, just more work. 
No, but it's you can actually I think set it up to where it'll automatically. I think there's there's different ways, but yeah, but it's uh, again something I've talked about uh, with a couple other people and just been on the fence. So if you guys if you guys want to see it on Rumble, we can make that happen. Just post down below, let us know. Is Rumble one of those that you can like? We can talk about stuff, point at things, touch guns. Theoretically, yes. I don't like that theoretically talk. Yeah, because we could you could do specific stuff over there. You just have to build the build the audience. The uh, got you. That's what a lot of people will do. They'll have like their stuff they post on both, and then they'll have like a, a lot of streamers are going to Rumble, and so if they're talking about uh, the wait, do I have a sensor button? Is it here? That is. <laughs> oh, that's not a sensor button. <laughs> okay, there we go. So if you talk about like the. Uh, you can't say those on YouTube. <laughs> really? No, like you'll you'll you'd get taken down. Like if we started talking about that a lot on here, or pretty much any like anything like borderline, <laughs> you can't like they literally like that's where everybody's gotten <laughs> screwed. Um, they, like they, a lot of the a lot of popular podcasts like won't even let you say the word. That's so stupid. Seamus Ward says, no way is six arc okay for hogs. Have a lean maybe, but he's seen dozens of male hogs run off with a 308 round stuck in their fat layer. He no longer thinks 308 is acceptable for hogs now because of how many times he's seen it. First hand, 4570 is his go-to for hogs. Zero chance in hell is six millimeter going to cut it on their piglets maybe, but definitely not full ground. <laughs> uh, sir, what's his name? Seamus. Shameless? Seamus. Seamus. That's a fake profile. Uh, please visit my Instagrams and watch all the videos of six hogs just smoking pigs. Maybe learn how to shoot. <laughs> Rude. With all due respect. You know what? Uh, <laughs> maybe. By, you know what? No. Just no. Learn how to shoot. This guy said, where are we buying our long rifle primers? Large rifle primers. That's a great question. <laughs> Wish I knew the answer to it. Yeah. Exactly. Gonna. Uh, I don't know, about 30,000 more pieces of 22 Creed brass can't load right now because of it. This is on, on 22 Creed. Um, any any considerations on the Nosler RDF 70 grain performance on Whitetail? On 22 Creed, no. I actually ran that particular projectile for coyotes. Now, will it kill it? Yes. Would that be what I recommend? No. Uh, he says he primarily uses the eight, uh, 80 and a half. Um, Burger? Yeah, but uh, as a backup option, he's saying it would work, basically. The 77, I'd probably, it'd be okay, but 70, it might be a little bit too explosive. I mean, anything will work if you shoot them right. I'm just like, are you calling out deer and you just want something like fun to head pop with? Oh, no, this is his daughter's uh, um, hunting rifle. Go the 77s at least. Strictly white tail. Yeah. <clears throat> 88 grain ELDMs are great. I mean, we've taken tons of white tail with 88s. Mm -hmm. There's also an 85, I believe it's 85 grain RDF would work fantastic as well. Actually, it might, depending on how hard he's leaning on it, what twist rate the 85 RDF might pinhole through if he's going real slow. But the 88 ELDM, it's going to, we've had lots of good luck out of 88 ELDMs on white tail. So it's funny, somebody else mentioned, uh, uh, the Unita Precision Bolt Gun Uppers. Uh, another comment. Just, I believe it's Uinta. Uinta? I don't know how it's pronounced. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's the AR bolt action. That's not something I would ever look up in a million years. <laughs> but I'm a there is, but I'm a dickhead, <clears throat> so. For the people that aren't, that are really into <clears throat> AR platforms... That are never gonna like go out and buy a bunch of different boat guns and yeah. you know all that kind of stuff. I can I can see it, or like if you want one gun, kind of like one gun box do it all type thing. It could be kind of cool to run like a certain upper for long range planking or whatever, and then have like a separate upper sitting aside with the thermal already on it for pigs. That'd be pretty cool. But why wouldn't you just like, I don't, I feel as if like the six arc being what it is took any thoughts 
I had away from running that particular setup. I guess my, because it gets into like, I would never, I guess it would, it would make certain, a lot of sense in certain, obviously for legal reasons, certain jurisdictions. And I'm sure for like hunting restrictions, I'm sure there's some workarounds it would provide. Yeah. I just couldn't ever see my, like, I would never have a bunch of uppers that go on one lower. So like that kind of takes away some of the utility for me. Yeah. And then it's boat guns, boat gun, man. They are, they are. But that's, uh, it's again, I just, not my thing, but it, like, looks, it looks really nice. Like I said, I mean, they, they all, they've been doing it right. I'll give them that. Uh, Cause they are pretty popular. Like all the worst things about an AR, I don't want on my boat gun. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But as good as shit is nowadays, like here's how I would want to play it. Yeah. I'd want to like test one of theirs, like full builds before I did anything. I, like, cause if the uh, upper and lower aren't super tight, like most of your high quality AORs nowadays, I wouldn't want the shit. Like that's one of the greatest things about a boat gun is you don't have those like sloppy tolerances. But like I said, pre six arc, like wanting to keep things like super simple, but you still want a boat gun and all that kind of stuff. Like I, I, kind of, I probably would have been about like something oh, like God. that. At least they're not okay. They're not doing the. Um, I hate nothing more than right, when that, people do the. They, that they'll, take a, well, they'll take an AR fifteen bolt face and they'll they, they keep it. Yeah. On something like, a, like, yeah, yeah, where they basically they're like welding a handle onto, onto yeah. an AR-15 bolt. Uh, all right. So that's I just wanted to mention there. Um, maybe one day you'll play around with it. Yeah, I mean, I've threatened to get some before, and it's just it's not really how my priority list. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. I should have one. Just have one. Uh, and like I said, like. I can see a very particular use case where it'd be candy uh, and cool. Like, but I just, I carry multiple guns. So that's, <laughs> I don't, you know, I've often threatened to like, especially like going out of town trips where I'm going to be doing like different kinds of hunting is like taking one lower and several uppers you know i even built out some for that very particular reason but at the same time I'm like i should build lowers for all those because <laughs> it's like it's kind of annoying but i can i can see the validness uh, that bolt action shit aside like i can see the validness of building like a couple different uppers one for like daytime hunting one for thermal hunting the thermal's already sided in on the upper and all that kind of stuff like that i might potentially do that but Especially as like space saving, if like I'm going out of town somewhere hunting and stuff like that, mm-hmm. instead of carrying multiple rifles like I tend to do, potentially I could just maybe carry a couple different helpers. But at the same time, I'm like, I wish this thing had its own. <laughs> Colton Smith says, and this is from our optics overload, peep the AR on the table that has a mag in it and is on fire the entire episode. My favorite podcast, hands down. Uh, you'll see that a lot, and it's because it's been, uh, the trigger's been pulled. It's, I just, I'm, it's, I love how people on here look. What? Well, he's pointing it out from like a like fuck the safety Nazi perspective because people get all oh. twerked off. I'm curious. Oh hell yeah, yeah that's no. If it's on this here, table, here's the deal. Here's what you city folk don't realize. <laughs> uh, it is pointed in the safe direction. If he shoots out there, there's that's actually you're you'd almost be shooting down the firing range from that. Like if you just had it like a slightly different angle. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's. Nine times, well, no, every time a rifle's in here, there might be, and there probably was, the magazine's probably full, but I yeah. pull the magazine, yeah. check the chamber yeah, as I'm yeah, walking yeah. in, and then press the trigger. I don't know how y'all's ARs work, but unless I... Oh, uh, sir, I run an HK416, I am able to put it back on safe, so it sucks to suck. <laughs> All of them been checked. They're technically, most of the magazines are generally loaded, but everything else, like, yeah. You know, Here's the deal. Uh, but, uh, the safety's implied. We don't. We're not gonna walk through it with you guys. Yeah, I don't. I don't give a shit. I'm never Wait, gonna be like, oh, give, the chamber's give, clear. Give them the. <laughs> this is our safety right there. Black Hawk Down, greatest movie ever. Uh, you know, top ten at least. Yeah. Uh, are we safe with firearms all the time? Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> ah! Thank you, Malik. My bedtime.
Did it disappear? My Sunday bedtime. <laughs> I walked in there earlier. The kid over here and Brooke's like, come to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, no, unfortunately. Like, I'm on vacation yet. We still, like, it's like. I was like, uh, no, we're going to do a 12 minute talk. <laughs> if you guys only knew what we sacrificed for you. Yeah. <laughs> like, of, you guys get priority over our sleep. Um, how much do suppressors affect the velocity of the rifle? <sighs> the question. Uh, it's all over the place. I've, I have never seen it slow it down. I've only seen it do nothing or speed it up. Is it is it negligible, would you say? Because it's never I mean you're not getting an extra five hundred feet per second. No, not that much. <laughs> it's like what, usually ten twenty? Somewhere around there. I'd have to go pull data out of books and all that shit. Uh I don't care if it slowed it down ten or twenty. I'd still run damn express. <laughs> John Summit with the dude, what happened to your beard? He had a moment of weakness, folks. He let it overcome him. It'll, it'll never be back to the way it was. Oh, this winter. <laughs> it's, I was uh, I was as distraught as you viewers, I might imagine. Was... I think I, did I scream? I think I screamed. Yes. I think I actually had physical tears. No, no, no. The day I mentioned it, you screamed. Yeah. And you looked like I had just tried to rape you. The look on your face. You ba- that's basically what you're doing to me. But the day I you actually saw me, because it was like a couple days after it, you you just like, hmm. <laughs> like, oh, well, you didn't go, me. well here's here's what i had feared is you going full full uh full, off. full cheek showing i never want nah. to contractor mode as i like to call it <laughs> gc no i just I tr- it's already growing back fast as shit i just trimmed her down for the summer like it mm. yeah she gets annoying well luckily this summer you're uh <laughs> you have an office job uh whatever <laughs> this guy this is fucking hilarious leopold glass agrees with my eyes what a boomer comment and he put laughing emojis but just a joke it's okay to joke i can take him <laughs> he is so much of a boomer for four months barf 13 year old valley girl with all the likes five minutes in and all bs talk you guys have way more time on your hands than i do yes what wait what did he say uh, I don't know if, if it would have been you or me having the word like a lot, which does suck. Sounds uh, like you. <laughs> you do it sometimes too, though. Oh, whatever. <laughs> and then we're just all, and apparently we're all bullshitting. I don't know what we were bullshitting about in the beginning of the optics video. I don't remember that was weeks ago. That's what we do sometimes. Uh, it's a podcast. <laughs> I bet that guy's fun at the parties. He probably is. Probably fucking hilarious. <laughs> Did he really? Did he say barf? Yeah. Yeah. What is this? A fucking. <laughs> Are you Bart Simpson? Barf. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> oh, I'm hoping this creates an environment where more people shit talk us because if you shit talk us, we will feature it on the show. I'm yes. so excited for it. Yes. Um, oh, this person literally took notes. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Salty Trucker. Te- salty Texas Trucker. I've seen his comments on a few videos. Uh, Lawrence Lee, you made a comment on an earlier episode that you prefer night vision over thermal. Why is that? And what is your favorite night vision? So, uh, the literally the next video after that, wasn't it? Yeah, we kind of addressed it, but just to, to talk over that again, uh, mostly uh, the refresh rate, because in thermal, you're looking at a screen. Night vision, you're literally looking at, like, there's there's no refresh rate, right? So when it comes to shooting targets that are in motion, that refresh rate does come into effect. Think of it like... Uh, Video gamers running high uh, hertz monitors and stuff like that. It's. Uh, Do you really think the person you're talking to is going to possibly, get that? possibly Lawrence Lee? Look at this guy. He's probably very sophisticated. He probably. <laughs> That's we're, we're on not YouTube. Ninety good... percent of the videos are gamers. <laughs> but anyway, high you know high refresh rate. It's kind of a limitation in thermals right now. I'm sure that'll you'll see that come into play down the road with like marketing of like oh this is high high refresh rate thermal. It's easier to shoot behind. Right. Uh, your favorite night vision? You run the the clip on the uh, L three, the PVS twenty four LR. Um, it's pretty badass. Mm-hmm. It's also ten thousand dollars. Mm hmm. Arm uh, side <laughs> has oh, we, a new one. Oh, I don't even care. Uh, that's uh, much cheaper. It's supposed to be for long range. Might have to try one out. 
Uh, frankly, sure the stupid back and forth that goes on in this podcast is its most hilarious draw card. You're welcome. Frankly. And then he he uh, he adds it at the end. Also looks like the personal grooming standards have improved. So we got a <laughs> we got a thumbs up for the beard. That's probably Kyle or somebody. <laughs> uh, Miles did comment on our most latest podcast. I did, I did see that. Let's see. We should send him a box of dog crap through the mail. It wouldn't be no fun if there wasn't no like banter bullshit and yeah, and this is also kind of our therapy, folks. We're gonna be honest. <laughs> we all ever go with thermal. It kind of is. It kind of is. You, most people. I don't talk to most people. Yeah, you guys think okay. This is the deal. You think he's like some sophisticated. Oh, I have a podcast. I do all this stuff. No, no. Literally, all he does is like, like shoot guns and kill stuff and think about shooting guns and kill stuff and do stuff in preparations for shooting guns and kill stuff. <laughs> like he won't go out to eat. He doesn't do dinner parties. <laughs> like if his friends invite him over to somewhere, he won't go. That's uh, the dinner parties portion is not true to that because we have our podcast guests and I have family yeah, all here. The no, no dinner parties <laughs> that you host. You won't go anywhere else. No. Well, the thing about it is I, I noticed this, uh, this trend a lot and i'm like man maybe i'm just a boring son of a bitch you're just, no you're just an asshole but when i talk to people like they don't want to talk about things i care about they want to talk about like whatever or like what's going on in the world yeah you know, i don't the don't, things they want to talk about yeah it's kind of thing you go to places <laughs> and you can talk about what you want to talk about and then you can talk about what they want to talk about well, this thing, like most people are... are they called relationships? They glaze over when they're like, they'll ask me a question. It starts out with them asking me a question about guns and <clears throat> or something, you know, ammo, whatever. And I, I'll try to answer the question and they just kind of glaze over. And I'm like... <laughs> I just... Nothing's worse than like, okay, <laughs> and especially these days. Like if you're known as like the gun guy among a, a, a group of friends... And then there's always the other person who like, oh yeah, <sighs> so and so's husband's a gun guy. Yeah. And then you get like stuck talking to that person. Yeah, and they're, and and they're, they're like, they own a gun. Yeah, yeah. They shot it once, so they're looking at getting a new thing, and or all of them like, <laughs> and, and you're like, you're not even like opinionated enough to where I could like at least like get you know, are you here at this party? But it's you just have to kind of like, here's what happens: they pull out their phone, they start showing you their guns, and you have to go, oh, that's cool, oh, that's nice, oh yeah. Oh, it was a man, sweet grip pod, you know? <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, that could be a whole thing on its own. Awkward. Maybe we'll talk about it someday. Yeah, but anyway, Wade's an asshole. He doesn't do anything. I'm not an asshole. Uh, <laughs> so on and so forth. Uh, will you all ever go over thermal optics? Uh, that's a someday. Someday. I want to have... Uh, oh, while we're on the subject, uh, Anthony Amitine, Texas killer, whatever you know him as, good friend of mine. Has been talking about coming down here for years now, or coming over here. I guess it wouldn't be the more apt description from where he lives. Tell him to come out here and let's talk. Like I want to talk to him about thermal. I want to talk to somebody else about thermal because here's my stance on thermal. It's expensive, and I don't like it that much. <laughs> like I don't, I don't. Well, it's a horrible short term investment or long term yes. investment because the new ones come out. Yeah, it depreciates very quickly. Like the night vision unit you have that you got, like the the one that we're, we just talked about, it's like it's still worth what it was worth. Yes, it's fantastic. It's invaluable in my opinion. Whereas like thermal, I already have a bunch of very costly habits. Thermal to get into the good shit, you're way up there in price, and I don't. It's like me and pistols. Like I, I'm buying a few more pistols here and there, and I'm shooting them more often than I typically would. But as far as like getting into that full war, like I, I don't I don't need another hobby. Uh, my my mind is taken up with like all the long range and all the other kind of bullshit information. I don't have any more room to start getting like to keep up with even more shit because I've I found the older I get, the more shit I learn, other shit goes away. <laughs> so I, you know, no, <laughs> just buy a thermal. Uh, listen to someone else like I, and i you know i don't even know like i would much rather get someone else on here like very into thermals like i am into like say guns or well, you know it's like we've always talked about it's so like it's so dependent to what you're doing yes and a lot of like the east texas stuff lends well to the thermal like a lot of the hunting style that 
you see that a lot of the people who are posting the videos on thermals, like that's where thermal excels. Yeah. But everywhere else, that's kind of, it's like, just not, I have several. It's a tool in a toolbox. And then there's times that call for it. And I use them for pigs and I use them for like scanning and that's, that's it. Yeah. Uh, I, again, it, and it's also primarily like a, a cost thing. Like that shit's expensive. And it's like new, and it's just like everything else. New models coming out every single year. And that's <coughs> well, it's just, not just new I, models. It's new models from all these different companies. And it's just, it's so hard to keep up with. I mean, again, when you already have an optics problem. Yes. The, I don't need another one. <laughs> yeah. And it, again, I just, we're, on the, we're on the precipice of them really improving. I just, I can feel it. Yeah. I can feel it in my gut. M- bug the shit out of Amatine. Tell him get out here and we'll talk all the thermal. Yeah. Ask him all the questions. Because someone like him, he works for that company and all that stuff. He's gonna see all the newest, latest, greatest stuff. He's gonna have all the information as far as, you know, hertz and microns and all that other bullshit. Maybe at some point, maybe we can get some of those guys out here, the uh ultimate night vision guys, like to nerd out on a shit. Like what I've watched a few good podcasts where they've came in. But I, there's still a lot of stuff like I'd really like to ask, like, what does this mean? What is this for? What are you looking for as it pertains to this? Like, yeah, there's a, we'll get to it eventually. It's just, I don't know, it's, it's not high pro. It's not my favorite. Yeah. Well, you're also, this is where Wade is a boomer. He gets, he gets his little things that he likes. And yeah. Like, don't fuck it well, up. Well, I mean, primarily it's the refresh rate in the, uh, they're garbage on higher magnification. Yeah. So like you're stuck with your your best quality is in the lower magnification. They don't have good eye relief because it's literally looking at a TV screen. So you're 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 stuck into running like these super weird cantilever type mounts or running an AR and just hell, it's just not my thing. There's the depth perception bullshit. A lot of people are super successful at it, and that's great and good for them. I'd much rather Predator hunt with lights. It's just something about that. It's way more exciting to me than the fucking thermals. Uh, South Texas outdoorsman for the love of suppressors. Please release the audio, f- the audio only first take. Everyone wants to hear Fitzy rant. Fuck the boomers and the fuds. Let them bitch. That was that pretty harsh. At the end was a cruel tease. Is, is this my alt account? <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for the positive feedback. You were. <laughs> you shouldn't release the audio only. I. Th- so I'm working on something. Oh God! I'm gonna. Here's the. Here's the. I'm gonna spoil it because I can't keep secrets. I'm. I've been working with AI plugins, and I'm trying to find one to create like an AI version of you, so then I can do the audio only, and it's like <laughs> AI you. I thought it'd be, but like over the top and ridiculous because I think it'd be hilarious. So that's kind of what I've been working on behind the scenes. I might have some more time to work oh on it. Oh my week. God! I let's see in quotes. Fitzy. Have a desperate need to be liked on the internet, so <laughs> I enjoyed this. Uh, thank you, thank, thank you. You helped a uh, plus one dopamine. <laughs> um, <clears throat> how does it can affect philosophy? Hey, we just answered that. Wow, wow. That's kind of the point of these Q and A's. Is hopefully universally like. Because, yeah, a lot of a lot of people, and this isn't even, like, this is a small amount of the questions overall that we get. Yeah, and hunting season, that shit's just like, and a lot of it is the same questions on multiple different platforms. And This is a good one. Uh, this is just a comment from uh, JKD0114 podcast idea. Try, try, try talking about minimalistic predator hunting or budget predator hunting. Yes, I had. Uh, I think the cool video would be, like, you know, if I only, like, the like the basics like this the the 10 things that i would need to do yes, this or whatever yes i uh, highlighted that one myself <clears throat> wayne Minson asking best uh, factory 6 art gas gun under a 1000 for coyotes and hogs what the <coughs> what are those smith and wessons priced up a little bit over that 11 12 it's so close 1400 um yeah i don't know who i don't know sub 1000 no experience so what is it? CMMG is more than that, isn't it? I think that I thought the CMMGs were a little bit more expensive, but probably that Smith and Weston CMMG price range. Did you say AR? Yeah. Oh, you can get that shit with boat gun for sure. Yeah. But uh, AR is gonna be tough nowadays. 
can be real. T- and I don't have any experience with like any thousand dollar ones. Most of them, like, what's is it the Springfield or Smith and Wesson? I always get it the volunteer. I think it's Smith and Wesson, right? And that one video yeah. was in there. Yeah. For the money. Now, I did swap out the trigger right off the bat. For the money, that thing shoots great. So there's that. Um, this is actually a great question. Uh, I oh wait, I can't read the name. It's Bucking Fastard. Ooh, little wait, no, I I just cussed like a million times. What the hell are we talking about? Um, why is such a short barrel twenty two Creed more when there's such a velocity dependent round? Is it still slapping as hard as a twenty four to twenty six? What does slapping mean? <laughs> it's like uh, you know when you get the the uh, the wooden spoon and the pot of macaroni and cheese. I think someone answered that, but go back and watch the 22 Creed more video. Yeah, it's re- it's really not like think about if you really like 22 Creed more is it's really not velocity dependent. You get a bunch of velocity because it is a 22 like <laughs> the reverse of that. It's uh the, in that video I touch on like barrel links and all that stuff and uh there's been multiple other videos about the Creed more cartridge case family 18 inch and longer it really like does fantastic, but like, especially when you step down to a 22 grade in the 18 inch barrel, I can run some pretty salty velocities with the 75 graders and up. Now, again, go back and watch the video. Yes. That, that one particular 22 grade has, uh, dealt out a fair amount of death over the past two years. So it's doing just fine. Like it's still very flat shooting run at 75 grain EODM. Well, I think the reality is when you get a can on there, like 20 inches, when when you start shooting suppressed, 20 inches is a long barrel. Yeah. So like getting into the... 18 inch with the right can is still a long barrel. I mean... Oh yeah, you throw a Hyperion on an 18 inch barrel, it's excessive. It's long boy. I mean, obviously a 24 inch is going to be running faster. Obviously. Yeah, but... but can it's what's well, the more question? Can I reach the performance I want on the, the whatever the use case? Man, that word, I'm just gonna get it on a stamp or something. You know, what is your use case? What are you doing with it? If it can meet that specification, then it's fine. Yes, and it does. The 18 inch performs just fine. Like, I don't remember the exact velocity off the top of my head. Go back and watch 22 grade video, but I do know this because I shoot it quite often still. Uh, the 18 inch running 75 grain EODM. And this is like a, this is a pretty fair load. Like it's not, I'm not pushing the, pushing it to its max potential at all. Uh, it's 0.5 mil at 300 yards with a hundred yards zero. That's, it's still like, um, a very flat shooting out all the way out to a thousand yards when you want to plank and count on like, yeah, there's tons of people that do it. Is it better at a 24 inch? It'd be that much better. It'd be about a 25 feet per second velocity gain per inch that you climb. But what's that going to buy you? Yeah. <laughs> it's just a cow rig. It's already, I'm already like aim a little bit high at 300. I can still kill the cow. So now if we're talking nighttime, that's where I roll out the long barrels. Cause I don't care. Like the chip, the rack rigs. 24 inch screaming velocities. I don't give a shit, but it, like daytime, I'm going compact as much as possible. Kind of like a, it's kind of like a long bed truck. Like it's really convenient. Like when you specifically need to do that, yes. but it just sucks in every other situation. Yeah. Oh, and man, we're getting a lot of love these days and I, I appreciate it. Michael Cerrone agreed with the whole podcast. So that's already, you're already starting off on a great foot um, <laughs> and no one, no one compares to you two. Uh, yeah, I think we're pretty great combo. What a nice guy. What a, yeah, what a great guy. Miles Com, why are you guys so jealous of other YouTube channels? Well, you see, Miles, there's this thing called resentment that happens when you're not like achieving like what you should be doing. So you look around to other people and you have to, you know, you can't just accept the fact they're doing better than you. You have to mentally uh, like degrade them in your mind and create reasons why they're successful and you're not. So what you're seeing there when we complain about other people is we're just psychologically trying to build ourselves up by tearing other people down. That's what that is. The irony of that statement is you're doing the same thing, Miles Cobb. Yeah, Miles. Why don't you like go do something with your life? What do you yeah. do? What do you even do? What do you do other than up than show up here over like there in Houston every four months randomly? Putting ketchup on enchiladas and shit. Does he do that? I think that's a Kyle thing. Oh, okay. 
Well, I think uh, there's some other stragglers we didn't get to, but I think, I mean, that is an hour and a half of us answering questions. That's good. That's a full. We're just gonna do a full podcast on that. What was our first? I guess that's our third Q and A, but that's our. Uh, that's our first. Like, hey, get the comments in there. Doing everything else. Well, this will probably wind up transforming into a live stream. We do. If, um, right. We just we'd have to figure out the day on that where we can do a live stream. You guys can answer questions live, and then we can uh, answer them. That would probably be. It's a better format for this, but we're introducing this into the the, the mind. So if you guys think of a good day for doing a stream. Becoming streamers. I think, uh, you know, we should do that. Well, now that once the ally thing's done, I think we get that set up because they have the internet to be able to yeah. sustain a stream. Just do them up there. See so, yeah, our secondary, our backup studio, if you will, that's getting finished. Got to order all the, the stuff for it soon. And then we'll be doing that. We're really about to start launching. Uh, I'll put it up here. It'll go ding. Ding. Uh, we started the Alley Outdoors YouTube channel right now. I just have a short on there. We haven't actually posted or anything. So if you guys could go subscribe over there, that's going to be a host through the summer. We're going to start doing a lot of uh, just very specific non non reviews, but like overviews of product, whether that's like, uh, you know, Scott, like scope unboxings, uh, you know, gun unboxings, things of that nature. We're going to start putting out content there. Long form getting into reviews, I think, is the intention with that. Um, so yeah, if you like and subscribe on that channel, we, we can get that get that going soon. But other than that, anything else? Lots of new stuff coming up on AlliedMunitions.com. Fishing shirts are uploaded. Our apparel should be in new apparel soon. Hopefully this week. Uh, <laughs> the ammo that went on the. Uh, end of season blowout sale just today which when you're reading this it'll be hearing this it'll be wednesday so potentially may not be any left but in case there is <laughs> two two three fifty two grain bought the hollow point it favored amongst a lot of our uh, customers but again we made tons of it a little bit left so we went in and uh, marked it down the end of season uh, excuse me the end of season blowout sale. There's still a little bit more of the 243, 68 grain. There's still a little bit more of the 22 nozzle. Better snag it up. We have optics now. Go check it out. Uh, if there's something you'd like to see on the website that us carry as far as optics go, let us know down below. Like this is where, you know, we pull stuff, ideas, and everything else. We uh, we have shotgun ammo now. There's going to be more. Uh. Man, that's just about it. I mean, we're adding tons of stuff to the website, like almost weekly. Fishing shirts, ally fishing shirts. And we'll probably have a reel about that at some point. Really nice shirts in the new apparel. You yeah, better be ready on the new apparel. And you just want to comment nice things about us, uh, stroke our egos, but that's <laughs> also appreciated. Well, folks, we appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all listening, watching, like, subscribe, all that crap. Yeah, no, it's great. It's great. We're uh, we do we we really do appreciate you know hearing from you guys because it kind of directs what we do. Yeah, more or less. yeah. You have a uh, subjects you would like us to cover. Let us know down below. Yeah, questions. Let us know down below. We'll catch the next Q and A. Like that's that's what this the whole point of this podcast is like. Talk to cool people and answer questions essentially. Yeah, we've had a very we've had a drought of cool people. Well, well we I mean, had two of them. <laughs> the coolest <laughs> well, i mean hey if you want to come on the podcast and you're interesting yeah reach out. reach out uh we're finally getting to a point to where maybe we can start scheduling guests again like things were way too crazy the past several months and <sighs> guests will be coming back like we didn't just go all of a sudden go solo it's just like our schedules have been chaos yeah we film we've been filming most of these either like super late at night, super early in the morning, or, or on uh, Sunday. Yeah, we're like yeah, late on afternoon, Sunday, Sunday, and even then, like we don't schedule. It's like oh hey, I just finished up this project. Okay, get, get down here. So we're uh, we're working on it. Yeah, I mean I, I can you know, but yeah, the don't worry. Both this channel and all the other channels, you're about to get a content uh, overload. Overload. Yeah, there's gonna be plenty of stuff. So we don't it's don't you worry your pretty little heads. It's gonna be fun. Stuff's coming. But yeah, y'all have a good one. Thanks for listening. See you guys next time.